you've likely heard of Agile principles, Scrum and Kanban. But what do these terms really mean? In this course, we'll delve into each of these topics. We'll discuss how they can improve your productivity as a software developer, and we'll also talk about avoiding costly mistakes organizations make when adopting Agile. My goal is to help you understand the core values behind agility in a relatable way without sounding like a textbook. If you expect to find terms and definitions that you will quickly forget, you won't find them here. I'll share stories and anecdotes from my own professional experience that will help make the concept stick. And trust me, I've seen it all with over 25 years of experience in the industry. You'll learn how to estimate work, organize scrum teams, run stand-up meetings, and why two pizzas might be the key to effective meetings. I'll show you how to create your own Kanban boards or cumulative flow diagrams and teach you how to use them to track project progress and identify bottlenecks. We'll also look at some common challenges development teams face and explore strategies for overcoming them. Additionally, the course comes with hands-on exercises, quizzes, and valuable resources that will help you engage with the material and solidify the concepts you learn. Whether you're just getting started as a software developer or looking for a refresher for Agile principles, Scrum, or Kanban, this course will give you the foundation necessary for success. So join me in this course and start building your skills today. You might have heard about Agile in the context of software development. But what exactly does it mean? There seems to be a lot of confusion and misconceptions surrounding the term Agile. So let me try to explain it. I'll first illustrate the difference between traditional software development and the Agile approach using an example. Let's say you want to travel somewhere. The train will get you where you want to go, but it's hard to change course. Trains have fixed routes and schedules that make changes difficult. Severe weather conditions, obstacles on the tracks, and other unforeseen events can affect your travel. However, if you travel by car, you can easily change course if something unexpected happens. A traditional organization is like a train. The tracks are laid, everything is planned in advance, and you follow these tracks precisely to get to your destination, that is, to finish the project. However, this model is not prepared to respond to change. Agile organizations are more like a car. You can easily adjust your travel plans and routes whenever necessary. Changing circumstances also affect software projects. Even when a project has been approved, the original goals or the underlying technology might change. The chance of this happening increases sharply with the complexity of the software project. That's because complexity translates to unclear requirements and longer development times. This flexibility doesn't come for free, though. Like our car analogy, making abrupt changes means longer travel times and higher costs. And these are also costs associated with the agile approach that we need to take into account. Now, let me tell you a real story. A situation where agility could have saved a lot of time, energy and frustration. I once worked on a project that relied on a new set of tools. The idea was promising and quite revolutionary back then. In theory, one could build apps using a mouse by connecting user interface elements with predefined logic. We were the lucky team to try out this new tool. We were given three weeks to finish the project. Everybody was happy. What could go wrong, right? The idea behind these tools came from the same visionary guy who was behind so many other innovative ideas. However, shortly after starting the project, we realized that the technology wasn't ready for prime time. The tools were buggy and inefficient. The IDE kept crashing. We spent most of our time rebooting our computers and checking the system logs for errors. When we finally managed to implement, sorry, drag and drop a feature, the software would literally break apart. What worked on one machine refused to start on another. It was nerve-wracking. We had no clue about the cause of these unexpected issues because there was no actual code we wrote. 
we were basically working with black boxes and there was no way to find out what was going on after connecting the user interface elements with the logic. We kept reporting the issues. Management wasn't happy to say the least. It has to work. You just need to put in more effort. Perhaps you need more memory or a faster processor. These were the usual responses to our complaints. However, after two and a half weeks, it became clear we wouldn't be able to make it work. The team was frustrated and we felt guilty despite knowing full well it wasn't our fault. We were testing a toolset that was released for production prematurely. An agile approach would have surfaced the problems earlier, giving us a chance to stop spending our time on a lost cause or go ahead with a different, more reliable technology stack. By the way, the company made a few more attempts to use the innovative drag-and-drop approach to develop actual products. All attempts ended in failure, and the toolset was eventually abandoned. So far, we've talked about the principles and values of Agile. While these principles and values are essential, they cannot be directly translated into a concrete methodology. This is where Scrum comes in. The term Scrum was first introduced by Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber in 1995. Scrum takes the values and the principles defined in the Agile Manifesto and distills them into a simple-to-follow framework. Scrum provides general guidance for managing complex product development, but it does not define detailed actions. Instead, it focuses on a team-driven, empirical process. How does this look in practice? Let's say you are working on a new product. The first step is to come up with an idea for the product. This can be done by talking to potential customers, doing market research, or simply coming up with a good idea on your own. The next step is to define what the product should do. This is called the product backlog, which is a list of all the features and functionality that need to be included in the product. The product backlog is maintained and prioritized by the product owner, who is responsible for ensuring that the product meets the needs of the customer. In addition to the product owner, there are two other key roles in Scrum, development team and the Scrum master. The development team is responsible for building the product. They have all the skills needed to build a working product, including analysis and design. The Scrum Master helps the team apply Scrum and follows its processes. The Scrum Master makes sure that the team has all it needs to be as productive as possible. Now, let's talk about how work is organized in Scrum. Scrum uses fine-grained time boxes called sprints. A sprint is a fixed amount of time, typically two to four weeks long, during which specific work is done. Before the start of each sprint, there is a planning meeting where the product owner and the development team members decide which product backlog items to select for the given sprint. The development team analyzes the high-level items and converts them into a detailed list of tasks. The selected product backlog items and the detailed task list get merged into the sprint backlog document. The development team is responsible for implementing these tasks and delivering the corresponding functionality. Each team member picks a task from the sprint backlog and starts working on it. Development team members then meet each day to assess their progress. The daily scrum, also called daily stand-up, is a 15-minute meeting where the development team discusses what they've been working on, any obstacles that have surfaced, and what is going to be worked on next. The scrum master and the product owner work with the team to remove any roadblocks or impediments. If the sprint is slipping behind, tasks are re-estimated and reprioritized. Every sprint should result in a potentially shippable product increment meaning that the product contains new features to show to customers. At the end of each sprint, there is a sprint review meeting for the development team to showcase what they have built. This usually happens in the form of a product demo. The customers and other stakeholders get a chance to check out the new features and provide their feedback. Direct feedback from customers is a valuable input into the product development process. The sprint review meeting is followed by a retrospective meeting that goes over what was done during the sprint and what could be improved. 
This meeting is not about finger pointing, but instead about identifying issues and coming up with constructive solutions. Then the process starts over again until the project completes. Now that you've got an overview of Scrum, let's delve deeper into Scrum roles. We'll begin with the product owner.